Amen. I won't be very long this morning. May we go together to the book of Romans chapter 5. Wow. There's something about worship that makes one feel at home. Romans chapter 5, when you find it, please do say amen. We will be reading from verse 12. Praise God. I wanted to say, let's read this year up in Kosi, this year corner, but I'm not sure. What if in Kosi I each of it must be, maybe, must be like verse 21. Amen. From verse 12. Have you all found it? All right. Let's read together, saints. Therefore, oh, thank you. Just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone's account where there's no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through the one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might, might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, thank you so much for your word. I pray that you speak to us this morning. Help me, O oh God, to flow with you. And that I would share your word as I ought to this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Shortly this morning, trusting God for grace that is going to help me, I'm not sure if I will be preaching, but I think I'll be teaching more. Amen. I would love to talk to us about the first and the second Adam. Amen. When God created man, he gave him the name Adam. And he put him in the Garden of Eden. But when we read scriptures, especially the letters written by Paul, we do find out that Jesus also was going to come as the second Adam. So the first Adam was the pattern of the second Adam who was going to come. Are we together, saints? After God had created Adam, the Bible says he put him in the garden of Eden and commanded him to work in the garden and take care of it. God said to Adam, you may eat from all the fruits in the garden except for one, 
from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded him that he should not eat from it. And God said, from the day you eat from that tree, you will surely die. Are we together, saints? But the Bible tells us that Adam, being deceived by the enemy, chose to disobey God and ate from the tree which God had commanded him not to eat from. And there's a number of problems that were introduced as a result of his disobedience. Let's go back to verse 12 of Romans chapter 5. Have we all found it? It says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all because all sinned. Problem number one is that when Adam decided to disobey God, he opened a door to sin so that sin may come in into the world. Before Adam ate from the tree, there was no sin in the world. But when he disobeyed, he opened a door. The Bible says, in him we all sinned. We were still in his loins. We're still in him. Remember that all of us are born from the seed of Adam. From the day when Adam disobeyed God, he made it easy for everyone who would be born after Adam to sin. Are we together, saints? All of us now are born with an inclination or something in us that gets pulled towards sin because Adam opened a door for sin to come in. And you would remember that according to scripture, sin is not just an act of disobedience, but sin is a personality because the Bible talks about obeying and fulfilling the desires of sin. Are we together saints? So when Adam sinned, problem number one is that he opened a door so that we may all sin. The Bible says, now we all have sinned because of Adam. Are we together, saints? In other words, when sin targets somebody, it's not only about that person, but it's about that person and many who are, commit, who are connected to that person. Are we together, saints? How many of you remember Abraham? There's a scripture I saw in the book of Hebrews. The Bible talks about Melchizedek, who was a priest. That Melchizedek is higher and greater than the priesthood of the Levites. Are we together, saints? And it says, in fact, even Levi, the ones, the, the tribe that was chosen to be priest, even Levi tithed to Melchizedek when Abraham tithed unto Melchizedek because Levi was in the loins of Abraham. Meaning that before Levi was even born, there were things that they were they, they had done already before they were born because they were in the one who did those things. I hope I'm making sense. Genesis chapter 20 between verse 1 and verse 2. The Bible tells us that Abraham was in Gerar for some time. And as he was in Gerar, he said of his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. How many of you remember the story? And the wife was taken away from Abraham. That's Genesis chapter 20, verse 1 to verse 2. Are we together, saints? But when you read chapter 6, I mean 26 of the book of Genesis, verse 6 to verse 7. Isaac, who was a son of Abraham, is now in the land of the Philistines. And he says to his wife, say to them, you are my sister because you are too beautiful. And if you say you are my wife, they are going to kill me for your sake. Are we together, saints? When Isaac said his wife was his sister, was he telling the truth? No, he wasn't. What was the reason for his lie? Not in tongues. <laughs> Abraham decided to lie 
that when we get to Gerar, I'm going to say, Sarah, who is my wife, is my sister. Are we together, saints? He chose to lie. Now Isaac, his son, is born. He comes to the land of the Philistines and he decides that I'm going to say that my wife is my sister because I'm afraid that if I say she is my wife, they are going to kill me for her sake. So he does give the reason for lying. Why did Isaac lie? <laughs> I was saying, is it, is it as complicated? Abraham lied by choice. Isaac lied. When he justified his lie, he thought it was because he was afraid of being killed. What he was not aware of is that when he was born, he was born with a seed that has the potential to lie. He thought he chose to lie, but he didn't choose to lie. His father had chosen to lie. So Isaac is born with it. Are we still together, saints? Let's keep going, let's keep going. Chapter 27, there's a young man who's born to Isaac. His name is Jacob. One time Isaac, in his old age, he says to Esau, my son, I'm going to bless you. Bring me some meat. Go hunt, bring me some meat. Do you remember the story? Jacob hears from his mother they conspire together quickly Jacob makes and prepares the meat and brings it to his father his father says who are you my son why were you so quick and Jacob lies to his own father he says my name is Esau your God has helped me to bring you this meat and he says the voice is the voice of Jacob but the smell is the smell of Esau because this man had put on the skin of a goat Jacob did not only lie but Jacob was a liar he lied wherever he went are we still together saints when Adam sinned he opened a door to sin to the whole world so that all those who were born after Adam were born sinners because of the sin of Adam, when we are born, you are born a sinner. You do not become a sinner because of what you have done. But from birth, you are a sinner. Are we together, saints? It's a problem which Adam opened a door to. How many of you remember David? Do you still remember David? Do you love David? What, what do you remember about David? David had a wife. And a wife, and a wife, and a wife, and a wife. Do you remember that? Now David has children from various wives. One of the problems that take place in the house of David is that there's a young man whose name is Amnon. Do you remember Amnon? Amnon has a sister, half-sister, whose name is Tamar. They grow up together in the house. But whenever Amnon sees Tamar, his half-sister, he keeps saying, Sabawel. <laughs> his own half-sister, she's cooking in the house. <laughs> she's doing everything. But the half-brother, is looking at her to a point where this young man pretends to be sick so that he may have Tamar. Do you remember the story? And he ends up raping her. But let's fast forward the story of David, God. David is old. In the book of First Kings chapter 1, he's old. All right? He's no longer doing some of the things. The pen is no longer writing. But... David marries a virgin. Do you remember the story? Just to keep the blankets warm. Just for an electric blanket car. Gets married. But when David dies, one of his sons, Adonijah, comes and calls a family meeting. Utintela, love virgin Gadad. As if that's not enough. Solomon, a son of David, grows up. He gets married. Wife number one. 
He gets married again, wife number two, wife number 50, wife number 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. And he looks at these 700 wives. He feels they are not enough. He gets kasut by pizza nyatsi. He gets a nyatsi, number one. Nyatsi, number two. Makopen, number three. Number four. Number 100. Number 200. Number 300. 300 makopenis. Problem number one is that when Adam sinned, he sinned by choice. But those who followed were born with the seed of sin in their system. When they are born, they've got to fight a battle to which a door was opened by somebody who had a choice between obedience and disobedience. When Isaac lied, he did not have a choice. It was already in him. When Paul talks about it, he says, the good I want to do, I do not do but the evil that I don't want to do I do it says there's something there's a law that is at work within me it's a law of sin I pray in the name of Jesus that in our walk with the Lord we will remember it's not only about us I pray that when we make choices to obey the Lord to follow his ways we will remember that there are battles that we must fight in our day and not let our children children fight battles that could have been avoided I pray in the name of Jesus when Adam sinned it was not only about him he was opening a door are we together saints let's go back to that verse 12 oh there it is let's read it together therefore just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin and in this way death came to all men because all sinned all right there's sin coming in knocking at the door of Adam Adam opens a door to sin but sin has a friend that he always tags along how many of you know when children are growing up you've got a friend you said I, and I'm I don't want that friend of yours that's how we grew up some of us so when they come to knock and then oh friend when are we are Zimela when are you open but when they get inside it's not only your child who comes in the friend who was hiding comes in also. Adam opened a door to sin. Sin came to the whole world. But through sin, death came in. Sin is a twin to death. When people choose to open a door to sin. Whether aware or not aware, they open a door to death also. They are twins. How many of you remember when God said the day you eat from that tree, you will surely die? Meaning that sin, even when it was being introduced, was introduced along with death. They are friends you can never separate. You cannot have one without the other. Are we together, saints? How many of you remember the book of James chapter 1? From verse 15, let's find it if we can. James chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. James chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. Have we found it? All right, let's read it together. Then after 
desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Verse 15, 16. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. The Bible says, sin enters through desire. Am I right? When you keep feeling sour well, sin is knocking at your door. Are we together, saints? But once sin comes in, what you are not aware of is that sin is pregnant. That's what the Bible says. It conceives death. When it gives birth, it gives birth to death. Am I making sense? When the enemy attracts you or entices you towards sin, his desire is that you open a door to death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. God says, oh Israel, why should you die? Turn away from your sins so that you may live because I do not, God does not uh, take pleasure in the death of a sinner. So sin and death are twins. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will wake up and refuse to be deceived. James says, don't be deceived, my brothers and my sisters. When the enemy entices you to sin, he wants your very life. But I pray that you shall live in the name of Jesus. I pray that you shall not die. I pray that you will open no door to death in the name of Jesus. I pray that premature death shall not have you, but you will live a full lifespan in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you came so that I may have life and life more abundantly I refuse to die before my time I refuse to die before I am done with my assignment in the name of Jesus thank you O oh Lord from the wisdom of your word I will learn and I will live in the name of Jesus let's go to the third Problem, and I'm beginning to close. In another 10 o'clock, say close. Let's go to verse 15, chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 16. Have you found it? What does it say? And not as it was by that by the one that sinned so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification verse 18 therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life amen we said problem number one with sin is that it opens a door to many are we together but number two it opens a door to death number three sin brings condemnation brings judgment. Do we remember when Adam and Eve sinned against God? There are words that were pronounced over them. God even cursed the land on which they were going to work. God said, you will eat from the sweat of your brows. Life was going to be difficult. Results were going to be difficult. Are we together, saints? Productivity was going to be a challenge for them because of the condemnation that had come with sin. But not only that, when the psalmist in the book of Psalms chapter 32 talks about the issue of living in sin, 
He says even his bones were drying up. He says his sin was forever before him. Meaning that when the sin in somebody's life, there is no peace at all. They constantly live in fear because of that judgment. There's a psalm that says God is angry with the sinner every day. There's condemnation that comes with sin. Are we together, saints? But there's hope. I said, but there's hope. I said, but there is hope. For the Bible says, when Jesus came and went to the cross, when he died on the cross, he erased the writing that was written against us, triumphed by the cross over the powers and the authorities and made a public spectacle of them in the name of Jesus. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he erased everything that was written against him. There was judgment, there was condemnation, but when Jesus went to the cross, he erased it so that we may be free in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your death on the cross. But number two, the Bible says when we were baptized in Christ, according to Romans chapter 6, we died with him so that we may die unto sin and be alive unto God. We said sin is a personality. It's a person. When we received Jesus, according to sin, we were registered as dead. And if you are dead, the Bible says now sin has no power over you. You have a right to live. You have a power to say no in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what your story is. It doesn't matter what you are connected to. But through the death of the Lord Jesus, you have died to the limitations of your family. You have died to the limitations of your bloodline in the name of Jesus. Power has been restored unto you so that you may live in the name of Jesus and the Bible does not only expect you to live but to reign in the name of Jesus those who have received the gift of abundant grace ah the grace shall give you power to reign in life I now declare you will not only rise up from that place but you will go higher than the place where you belong because of the grace of God in the name of Jesus I am here to speak that even if you are living under condemnation condemnation in is broken for the Bible says the gift is not like the result of the trespass for the trespass followed sin so that many were made sinners but the Bible says the gift of God follows many trespasses and bring justification just as if there was nothing that stood against you in the name of Jesus when the gift of God came, it followed all the trespasses and dealt with them. Everything that was meant to bring your downfall has already been dealt with. You are free in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when it talks about us dying with Christ Jesus in Romans chapter 6 it says he died and arose again so that death would have no mastery over him now that we died with Jesus Christ even death has no mastery over you that's why Paul says I don't know which one to choose whether to go or to stay he says if I go there's a great reward but if I stay there's fruitful labor and he says for your sake I will stay if you didn't have dominion over death you would not be able to choose 
The Bible says in the book of Psalms, should be, is it 118? It says, I will not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. My Bible says in the book of Hebrews, when Jesus came, he destroyed the one with power over the power of death so that he may deliver all those who for the rest of their lives lived in the fear of death now that Jesus has died for us you don't have to live in the fear of death because the one with power over the power of death has already been defeated in the name of Jesus somebody say Lord Jesus the fear of death is broken over my life I am free from the power of death I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus by the way the Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus he is a new creation the old is gone and the new has come behold everything has been made new in the name of Jesus I am here to remind you that in Christ Jesus you are a new creature you are a new creation the old is gone and the new has come welcome the new bye bye to the old in the name of Jesus the limitations are gone the curses are gone the fears are gone sickness is gone failure is gone the power of sin is gone the power of death is gone if any man be in Christ is a new creation the old is gone in the name of Jesus the patterns of my family are gone the failures of my fathers are gone I am a new creature in the name of Jesus you are the new beginning you have a choice to open up a door of blessings to your family in the name of Jesus I had the Bible say if you obey my word and my command I will bless you and the fruit of your womb I pray that beyond your lifetime your children will give praise to God for their mother for their father who chose to obey it may not be easy but choose to obey there may be temptations choose to obey things may pull you choose to stand there may be times where others will pull away from you turn against you for your obedience they speak but choose to stand I want to close. I want to close. I want to close. I want to close. But I heard the Lord in the book of Isaiah when he addresses Israel. He said, You Jacob, children of my friend, I pray in the name of Jesus that your children shall have visitations that they may not even deserve. In the name of Jesus. I had God in the book of Genesis chapter 22 after Abraham decided to obey God and God said because you have done this I will bless you and your descendants let them be grandchildren who will praise God for your life and your choices in the name of Jesus your obedience is not in vain in the first Adam we all failed because when we fail when he failed we were in him but the second Adam came to set us free today you have the right to choose if 
even if you were addicted to something the Lord Jesus is here to empower you so that you may choose before Jesus came we had no choice sin had power over us but I am here to remind you that you have been set free you have power in the name of Jesus oh Paul I explain that now don't let sin reign over your body members allow none of your body parts to be used as an instrument of wickedness but let your body parts be used as an instrument for righteousness there are times when the enemy is looking for your hand to do evil and wicked say not mine in the name of Jesus there are times when the enemy is looking for a mouth to do wickedness say not mine if you want to say something use somebody else and not me in the name of Jesus Jesus, because my body parts have been redeemed. <sighs> May we stand up on our feet as we close. It's just two minutes before ten. We ought to close. <sighs> We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I want to pray for someone who says, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you want to receive Jesus and be at peace with God, please lift up your hand where you are. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. But number two, I would love to pray with someone who says, I am born again. But I've been struggling making the right choices. I want grace and mercy from God because I realize God, this thing is not only about me. It goes beyond my lifetime. Somebody who says, I don't want to create unfair beckles and enemies for my children. I have a choice now, but born, they will have no choice because they will be born with it in their system. They will be born under condemnation. If you say, Lord, I want to turn away from my ways. I am a believer, but I've been making wrong choices. Now I want to live right. If you are that person, come, let's pray together. God doesn't judge you. God loves you. God loves you. God is gracious. God is merciful. He says the gift of grace is not like the trespass. You know that even when you want to do what is right, but there are things that are heavy on you, the choices you want to make are not the choices you make. You feel like Paul. You said, there's a law that is at work in me. What I want to do is not what I do, but the things that I don't want to do are the things that I find myself doing. There are times when I say I repent, but I go back to them. I've got seasons where I know which this thing just comes back. I don't know how, but I want to live right and to do right. We are going to pray together. going to ask the church please just pray with us we are going to pray together I want you to talk to the Lord tell him what that issue is and tell him your decision that you are turning away from it and I'm going to be standing with you the church will be standing with you we are going to pray together in agreement in the name of Jesus are we ready to pray let's just pray together saints father in the name of Jesus we thank you and we honor your holy name. We give you glory and we give you praise. Thank you so much that you love us and you don't condemn us. 
Lord Jesus, you said in your word you did not come to condemn the world, but to save us. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Here we stand, oh God. Lord, we recognize that we were born disadvantaged because of the choices of Adam. But thanks be to God for Jesus Christ who came so that he may set us free. Lord, we stand on your promise for you said in your word, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we stand in agreement, we receive that freedom in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much that your grace empowers us to choose in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we commit ourselves that when we have to choose, we will choose right in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, that you have cleansed us, you have purified us, you have sanctified us in the name of Jesus. And we declare that as from today, our story shall never be the same again. And I thank you that the power of guilt, the power of condemnation is now broken and we receive your peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap hands to the Lord. Amen. 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 It's done in the name of Jesus. 